Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and today I'm going to do two things. I'm going to make a fun project and I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. The fun project, I'm going to turn this panel that has all these flags and turn it into this pendant. And the cat out of the bag is I will be one of the teachers for the annual sewing retreat from the store called That Sewing Place. This retreat runs for three days. There's 12 different classes and it's going to be a lot of fun. And because that sewing place is a fabric store, it's going to be able to offer a big range of items. We have scanning cuts, garment constructions, we have quilting. So the retreat is going to be a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to it. I'll put a link in the description if you do want to check it out. And that sewing place does have a pattern that goes along with this fun panel. The panel is from Riley Blake and has these beautiful triangles that we're going to be able to turn into flags or that pendant, some ribbon, and some unusual shapes, which is designed for a napkin, and some badges or some coasters, and some gift tags. We do have the directions we can follow, but in this case, I'm going to change it a little bit because I want to use every single piece of this panel. So I will not be using the napkin as a napkin or these badges and tags as what they're planned on doing. I'm going to turn all of these into one long pendant and it's going to be a very easy way to sew. So you're going to need the panel and a little bit of fabric to make sewing all of these pieces really easy, we are going to leave the pieces really big and then cut them down after we sew them. So I'm not going to cut the panel apart until I'm finished the sewing. That extra piece of fabric will need to be laid on top of this panel. And then we're going to stitch around all of these edges. But in order to stitch from the wrong side, Without having an edge to follow, we're going to have to draw the edges. But it definitely will be worth it to save the time. When we look close at the panel, we're going to see these black broken lines. Those black lines are cutting lines, which means a quarter inch in is going to be the seam allowance. If we're going to be stitching this all together, we're going to need to transfer these lines to the back of the fabric. We will be able to see through this fabric if we put something light behind it. So we're going to be able to transfer these lines to the back side. So if you put something light down, turn your panel upside down, you can really see those black broken lines. So for this entire panel, we do need to just draw those black broken lines onto the back. We can draw them with a straight line and they can be quite dark because these are going to be cutting lines. We're never going to see those marks on the right side of the fabric. So transfer all of those black lines to the back side of the fabric. Once all those black lines have been transferred onto the back, we're going to be able to sandwich our fabrics together. So whatever fabric you have decided to be the background fabric can go on next. The panel is about 25 inches by that width of fabric. Place right sides together and press them together. Once those right sides are pressed together, we can pin this entire panel together. Once we have these all pinned together, we're going to be able to take it to the sewing machine and sew all of the seams at one time. The lines that we drew are cutting lines. So we're going to use the edge of the foot along those cutting lines. The panel has been designed for a quarter inch seam allowance. So using a quarter inch foot will be very handy. I want to stitch inside and we can see that pattern. I want to follow that cut line along the edge of my foot as I'm stitching, which means that needle is going to give us that quarter inch seam allowance. There are some seams we're going to sew and some that we're not going to sew because we will need to turn this fabric right side out. For the four circles, we're gonna stitch all the way around. The napkin, same thing. Go all the way around, stitching that quarter inch seam allowance. 
for these long ribbon pieces, we want to stitch down one side all the way to the bottom, going up and coming back down. But when we come to the other end, we need to leave one end open. So we're making a big U and we're going to do that to both of those ribbons. So for the edge that we're not going to stitch, just put a light X and that way we know we're not going to stitch there. For the gift tags, I'm going to go all the way around and leave the bottom open and that way I can turn it right side out through the bottom. So those two bottoms I'm putting a little X on. And the flags are going to be really easy to do. Those flags are big triangles. We want to stitch the long sides but not those short edges. So we can put an X on the shorter sides of the flag. The way the flags are laid out we're going to be able to stitch going straight from one edge to the other and we're going to do that on both sides going all the way down. So we're going to be making these big X's with stitches on both sides of that cutting line. So we will not be doing any of the lines going on the horizontal. Just do big X's. That's going to leave the tops of the flags open. Put the quarter inch foot on, use a small stitch and stitch using that drawing guide along the edge of the foot. Now that this has been stitched, we need to just take a minute and press. And I would recommend pressing with the iron going up and down because we do not want to distort the fabric. So just press all of those seams flat. Now that this is pressed, I can cut it apart and we get to cut on those seams that we drew and cut. And I'm going to do that throughout the entire thing. Be sure to cut on those dashed lines even though you did not sew on them. With all of those seams cut, I have my flags all stitched together. Right sides are touching. I didn't have to worry about stretching those bias seams. And I have all of the flags done. As I'm cutting out the pieces, I'm going to take time and cut off the corners and those points. I do not want to cut the threads. I just want to come nice and close. For any of the curved edges, I did use a pair of pinking shears. It's not mandatory, but if you do have them, it does leave a very nice finish underneath. And it also helps reduce the bulk. Now we're going to be able to turn these right side out. We do have the openings that we're going to be able to use for the gift tags. The opening on the end of those long strips and the opening of those triangles. So we need to turn all of those right side out. Once they're turned right side out, we can give them a nice press. For the little circles in the napkin, we need to make a hole in the background fabric. So we're going to separate this fabric and in the background, make a little hole. And from here, we're going to turn them right side out. Once all of the pieces have been turned right side out and pressed, there are two areas that we're going to need to tuck in that seam allowance and close that seam. We can hand stitch it, use a fabric glue, or top stitch all the way around. So we will need to do the two labels and the two ends on those long strips. We will now need to put these together so that they form that pendant. But we're going to need a strip of fabric to join them together. I will be using a strip of fabric two and a half inches wide and it's the full width of the fabric. Take one end, press it over, and by using an imaginary line, we're going to match those raw edges to that center. So we have two folded edges. Match those folded edges and press. That's going to give us a finished edge and two folds all the way down right to the other end of the fabric. And this end I'm going to tuck up underneath my napkin. So it's going to fit in here so I will not need to finish that edge. Leave about two inches and start to add your flags into the center. 
we can pin all of these flags down and do one row of stitching right along this folded edge. With that binding stitch down, the binding covers the raw edge of the front of the flag and of the back. I now have those two long strips sewn together and I'm going to be able to put that napkin, which I'm turning into a flag piece, in the center. Slip these ends right along that fold. Tuck that little end up into the fold, lift up your fold, and pin this little strip on. Do that to the one side and the second side. Top stitch those corners down. With this little end stitched in, fold that napkin over and do a little stitch right along this edge. So we only have a little bit. The flag is still going to open, but this little stitch is gonna cover this inside. With the center stitched on and those edges all done, we can now accessorize it. We have two labels, these round little buttons, and of course, our ribbon. We can put those little buttons anywhere along the flags. Just stitch around that edge and stitch them down. These ID tags can be filled in. Names, birthdays, any special occasion can be filled in these tags and can be put wherever you'd like. I'm going to put one on each end using this little ribbon. Cut it in half, take that half piece, fold it, and stitch it right along the top. So we have a little stitch right there. Slide that little loop into the end and somewhere stitch it down and do that to both sides. With that last piece of ribbon, I've made a big bow in the center and I'm done. On each end, I have a little tie that I'm going to be able to tie the pendant up. I have all those beautiful little flags. Those little badges have been used. The ribbon has been used and what they called a napkin has been used. And all the way along, it has a beautiful, fun finish. Right to the end where we have another tag and another tail to tie. Now this is not where it's going to go, but you can see how cute it is going to look hanging up from window to window or against a wall. It's such a fun little project to do. This was a quick and easy project to make. It took only an afternoon. That cute fabric did all of the work. Now you could cut all of those little flags individual, the circles individual, and use different fabric on the background. So you could use up a lot of scraps, but by layering two pieces of fabric together, marking the back where our cutting lines are going to be, pedal to the metal, we got it done in no time. I'll put a link in the description to that sewing place. And as always, thank you for joining me today on Sew Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and come on back. Let's see what we're making next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.